out. So we're starting to see these types of equations quite a bit. I'm trying to get to the point where we can distinguish the kind of curve we're playing with. What stands out on this one is we've got a, a minus sign right here applied to a y squared term. So whether it's applied to y squared, x squared, it's a minus sign. Looks like we've got a hyperbola that's forming. So as we've done with circles, as we've done with ellipses, we're going to group our x's together. Leave a little space here. We're going to group our y's together. Leave a little space there and move our constant over. We're doing this, of course, to complete the square. All right, but if we're going to complete the square, we need a, uh, a coefficient of 1 on our x squared term or y squared term, right? So I've got to take a 9 out here. That leaves me with x squared plus the 10x. Got my space. For the y's, got to take out a negative 4. It leaves me with y squared plus 8y. Got my space. And that equals the negative 197. So, completing the square. For the x's, take half of 10, 5, square that, I'm adding 25. And we saw this with ellipses, right? I'm not really adding 25 here, I'm adding 9 times 25. So I'm adding 225 to both sides. For the y's, I'm taking half of this 8, squaring that. So 4 squared gets 16. Again, I'm not adding 16 on. What I'm really doing is I'm adding on negative 4 times 16, so that's negative 64. I have to subtract 64 over here. So now we clean up. We officially complete our squares by factoring down the x squared plus 10x plus 25. We get x plus 5 as a quantity squared. Factoring down the y squared plus 8y plus 16, we've got y plus 4 as a quantity squared. That equals, got to take negative 197 plus 225 minus 64. That gives you, if I recall, it's negative 36, right? Okay, we know we're looking for a hyperbola here. So we need a 1 over here. Divide everything by negative 36. If you divide everything by negative 36, well, 9 and negative 36 share that common factor of 9, right? So when I divide, I'm going to have x plus 5 is a quantity squared over, it would be 4. I've also divided the positive by the negative, so that negates this part. Meaning the next part, I'll be dividing into a negative with a negative. That'll be positive. I'll have my quantity of y plus 4 squared on top. That's going to be over. You got 4, you got 36. Share the common factor of 4, so 9 will be on the bottom. All of that equals 1. So now we got the form that we need help us find all the key pieces to graph the hyperbola. So starting with the center. Now let's see, with my x up here, I've got a positive 5, so x coordinate's going to be negative 5. With my y up here, I've got a positive 4, so y coordinate's going to be a negative 4. I'll go ahead and plot these pieces as I find them. Negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, which direction is this graph going to go? Is it going to be a left right opening or a bottom top opening? It's going to be a, a bottom top, right? Because the positive is associated with the y stuff meaning the transverse axis is going to have to go vertically. So that takes into consideration this 9 as my a value, so to speak. So a is going to be the square root of that 9, which is 3. 
From this point, I'm going to go up 3 and down 3. That's setting up my vertices for the hyperbola. So now the B part of it. The B part of it, well, that's coming from this 4 over here. You're taking the square root of that 4, which is 2. If I count out that distance horizontally from my center point, 2 in each direction, get those points. And what that is doing for me, that's lining up my central box that I'm going to use here for guidance to graph my asymptotes. Now that I've got that box in play, kind of highlighting the, the corners of those boxes or that box, knowing that I'm going to draw some asymptotes through those corners, also going through the center. And those asymptotes will help to guide me with the hyperbolic curve. So the asymptotes are in there. You know, this point right here and this point right here, that represents the vertices, so I could start to fit in my curve. And finally, for good measure, we find our focal points. The equation to find the focal point, C being the focal point, at least the focal point distance, c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So in this case, it's going to be c squared equals 9 plus 4. c is going to be the square root of 9 plus 4, so c is going to be the square root of 13. And from my center point here, vertically, I'm going to travel up the distance, the square root of 13, to plot my focal point. The square root of 13 is going to be between 3 and 4. Yep. So up 3, a little past 3, not quite to 4. Plot my point and then down the same direction, plot my point. 